what's up guys welcome or welcome back to my channel i know it's been a really long time since i've come on and given you guys an update on what's been going on with us um it's been really nice to just take a break and refocus on what's kind of important to us right now focusing on our relationship and just trying to have a lot of peace during the next couple of months um it is now about to be thanksgiving and i think the last time i came on and gave an update um I don't know what the update was. I think it was my birthday that I posted. Yeah, it was my birthday. Um, since then, I would say our last transfer that did not work out in June, um, we kind of took the next couple of months off and we did move on to a new clinic. We are now working with Utah Fertility Clinic. Um, I love CNY. They will always um, have a special place in my heart and we still do have an embryo frozen there so we might end up going back there eventually but for now we are working with Utah Fertility Clinic um, and <clears throat> just needed like some fresh perspective on our previous cycles and my body just to see what's what else we could do to figure out what's been going on as to why our other transfers haven't worked um, and so in August I went out there and did a saline sonogram and my doctor found that I had three polyps in my uterus and those got removed the next day. And we also did a couple of biopsies. We did the Emma and Alice test. I believe we did both of those. And then we did the Receptiva DX, um, which is supposed to check to see if you have endometriosis. Um, and then, you know, some of them also check for endometritis, which is kind of just like an infection in your uterus. Um, but during the hysteroscopy, my doctor found that I had something called adenomyosis, which is where the cells of the uterine lining grow in the wall of the uterus. It's a little different from endometriosis, but they say it's kind of like a sister to endometriosis. Um, and it can affect implantation. Um, so that might explain why we haven't had any of the embryos that we've transferred so far to implant. Um, we did try another transfer with Utah Fertility Clinic. Um, we did make embryos there and that transfer did not work, um, but they did not treat my endometriosis before we did the, the other transfer. So that is what I'm doing now. Um, I have to take Lupron Depot, which is a shot that I take once a month for three months. Um, before we can do another transfer. So that's what's been going on. Um, I will say that with the holiday season being here, I'm glad that we're not actively preparing for a transfer right now. It is just emotionally a lot. Um, so much that you don't even realize it sometimes, especially with the holidays. There's a lot of grief in general that goes on during the holiday time. And I'm just glad that we don't have to worry about an embryo transfer working or not working on top of everything else that comes along with the holidays. I know a lot of you are still waiting um, for your babies and you still have empty arms, so do I. Um, and it's, it's hard, it's really hard. So just trying to do things that make you happy, lots of self-care during this time, you guys. Go get that massage, book that bar class, whatever it is that makes you happy. Um, I've been enjoying doing some DIY projects for Christmas. I'm making a beaded garland for my new Christmas tree. That's my old tree in the back. Um, but this is really such an important time to focus on yourself if you are still waiting for your baby. Um, because the holidays can be a very lonely time for a lot. Um, you know, luckily my family is very festive around the holidays, so I'm looking forward to um, Christmas and you know Thanksgiving to share with our families so that we can you know, be around our loved ones. Um, but we've also just decided to keep like the details of our transfer to ourself this time around. We're not gonna share the details of when that's happening with anyone this time. Um, I probably will record, but I probably won't post it until after the fact because it's just really hard giving all the updates all the time. And then when you do that, you invite in all the unsolicited advice that people give you about what you should be doing to try to conceive. Well, just don't stress or just take a break or why don't you adopt or have you considered this? Have you considered that? Yes, we've considered everything, everything under the sun. Um, I know people mean well, but it is just really hard in general to have to give so many updates all the time. And particularly when it comes to what we should be doing. Um, I just don't feel 
comfortable sharing the details uh, in terms of people like waiting with us to see if the transfer worked or not. Um, you know, there might be a couple of like really close people that, you know, I share with, but in terms of, you know, the majority of family and friends, you know, we will be keeping this to ourselves the next time around. And, you know, I will be happy to share once we're actually pregnant and our pregnancy is viable. Um, but I know that a lot of you have found me because you're on the same journey. And so we will share, but it will be sharing after the fact, after things have already happened and that we've had time to process and grieve if need be or celebrate if need be. Um, but yeah, that's the update. Um, just to give you a little bit more details on, you know, why we switched clinics. Um, I really feel that CNY is a great clinic. They're awesome. They are very... Sorry, my battery died. Um, but I was talking about CNY and how great of a clinic they've been for us. Um, we just needed a little bit more hands-on approach to what was going on with me. Um, as you know, CNY has a lot of different locations and many different doctors. Um, and Utah has a couple of different doctors as well. But for the most part, it's you know a clinic. They have a couple of locations located in Utah and I think one in Vegas. Um, but just at the recommendation of some other fertility friends that have also kind of had a similar path with me, even, you know, going down the CNY route and then they switched to Utah and just had a lot better outcome in terms of um, personalization, I would say. Um, you know, the fact that my doctor there was able to find that I had those polyps right away, just from my saline sonogram and then also found, finding the adenomyosis through a hysteroscopy. Um, that was pretty big for me in terms of like, wow, you know, we've just been kind of like burning through our embryos without any real reason as to what's been going on, um, without me having to prompt to try to figure out what was going on. Um, I know that I have fibroids, but none of the doctors that I've seen, well, CNY does, they think that, you know, I should remove those. Um, but just about all the other doctors, my OBGYN, you know, my new clinic, um, they don't feel like removing those fibroids is necessary right now because it will cause unnecessary trauma to my uterus, which would cause me to have to automatically have a C-section and they don't want that right now. Um, so, you know, the less invasive approach, the better is, you know, what my doctor now feels. Um, but I do love CNY. I think they're a great clinic. And I think if you are someone that, um, you know, can't afford fertility coverage. They're a great clinic to start with. Um, I have been pleased with all their communication and everything. I know people complain about that sometimes, but for me, because I came from, you know, a couple rounds of IVF before, I kind of knew what to ask and how to stay on top of things and how to advocate for myself. So that was never an issue for me. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just have to try a different approach. And sometimes that change in approach is all that it really takes. In addition to switching clinics, I am in the process of working with a reproductive immunologist right now. And if you don't know what a reproductive immunologist is, they are someone um, that specializes in immunology as it relates to the reproductive system. Um, so I have a doctor who, you know, is like uh, specialized in fertility in, in, in general, but specifically immunology. So I had to do like 30, um, like more than 30 tests Blood, through blood work to check for any like autoimmune issues that might be going on that is causing my body to maybe attack the embryos when they implant them. Um, just getting a little bit deeper into the why behind why we've had such a hard time conceiving. Um, and that doctor, um, his, his based in Orlando, but he takes virtual appointments and clients. His name is Dr. Hubiz, um, Giovanni Hubiz. And I'm really excited to work with him. When I first had my consultation with him, he was just very reassuring. And he was just like, you know, Sherry, I just wanna let you know that like, you are not the only one going, you know, through this. Um, we can help you to try to find a solution to what's going on with your body um, to help you to conceive. Um, so he was just very reassuring, reassuring and helping to get to the bottom of things, which is what is very important here. Um, especially with now that I know that I have adenomyosis 
at the end of the day, like adenomyosis, endometriosis, they're all um, like inflammatory responses in the body. So working to take medications to kind of counteract that inflammatory response um, is really important. Now CNY will, will prescribe you an auto, they will prescribe a immune protocol along with your transfer protocol, which is great. But what my doctor, um, the reproductive immunologist said was, he said that, you know, just treating those kind of treating treating everyone like they all have you know these diseases without really knowing you know like what level of medication you need how long you need to be taking it before transfer like more specifics around the why you need to be taking all these extra medications you know doesn't really help anything so that's what we're going to be shooting to figure out and discover is if there's anything else going on with my body on top of the adenomyosis that we can treat. So I'm excited to hear about that. I will give you guys an update on those results. I find that out next week on the 30th of November. So I will post that um, and let you guys know how that call goes. But yeah, I just really wanted to come on and give you guys an update and also to just let you know that I am here for you still. You know, I know the holidays are a really hard time like I talked about before. But we are all in this in this together and I know the more that we share our stories the more that others feel less alone so I hope that this holiday season finds you some joy and I hope that you can find something to be happy about and something to be grateful for especially as we approach Thanksgiving um, and then Christmas and yes I have my tree up super early um, I got a new tree downstairs but um, I haven't finished decorating that one yet so I'll show you guys my decorations if you want to see it let me know um, when I'm done, but yes, we're still staying hopeful at the moment and um, we just look forward to the future and to success. Um, for those of you that have to take Lupron Depo, Depo to treat either adenomyosis or endometriosis, um, there are some pretty harsh side effects with that medication. It basically sets your body into early menopause, so um, you can get the hot flashes, you can get depression, you can get um, bone loss, you can get a lot of different things going on, but overall I've heard the majority of people that have had success after treating you know, adenomyosis or endometriosis with, with this medication for three months. Um, I am just trying to stay super hyper-focused on our goal, which is to have a baby, and also to just focus a lot more so on self-care, whether that is Finding a moment at night to meditate, um, meditation, like I said, massage, um, trying to exercise more. I've been really trying to stay focused on my diet in terms of eating healthy foods, just putting good things in my body. I did stop drinking alcohol starting in October, so I won't be drinking for the next couple of months. And my body has just felt really good. Um, I've had a couple of like mild side effects here and there, but I'm also very conscious of like my space and my energy and who's in my space and who's in my energy who's messing with my energy and who's messing with my space um so you have to just be very like hyper focused on what is best for you what makes you feel good who makes you feel good who makes you feel bad and staying away from those um, people or, or situations um, so i just encourage all of you during this holiday season to really take care of yourselves more so than anything else. Um, and I pray that you all get that bundle of joy sooner than later, of course. But um, again, sorry for the long break, but I'm glad that I could give you guys a quick update. All right, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification to stay up to date on you know, all of my newest videos that I release. Um, and I will try to not be so inconsistent but if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you follow me there. I do post more there than here on YouTube. Um, so make sure you follow me at on Instagram. I'm at I am Sherry Yvette. And I'll make sure I leave that down below as well. But I look forward to connecting with you. But stay happy and stay encouraged. And happy holidays.